My name is, is Cooper Tilson, and I'm studying the history of Coal Creek Manor. What a project. Well, it's what I do. I do documentaries. Yeah. Get all my personal photographs, all laid out on the table. Real personal stuff to me. How much you getting for that movie about my family? Huh? Oh, don't worry. I'll be sure and buy the DVD. Let Dennis play camera right close up. We were setting up the movie and, you know, Dennis's character became this sort of docu-filmmaker, you know, sort of indie dude sort of thing, uh, which is a character I know quite well, you know. I'm very happy with that character. He makes documentaries from home, which we all can do now. We've got our computers and our DV cams and all the rest of it. He's a historian, so he makes interesting but low-budget, you know, documentaries about architecture or whatever. The minute he moves into the house, it's full of junk and it's full of history. There's a lot of artifacts in the house. There's a lot of photographs, maps of the old place, all the furniture, trophies. Everything is there in the house the way that it was, only it's sort of dust covered. And I decided to make a documentary film about about this house. What's all this stuff? It's all uh, things from the family that lived here before. The family lived here before? Yeah, the Masseys. And not only the former owners, but every generation previous, all the Massey, all the stuff was there, which created this, this gold mine for a guy like Cooper, who's a documentary filmmaker who gets into all this and starts to shape a project around it. He starts looking at footage. He finds old tapes of the previous owner and the family in the pool. He finds photographs. He finds very personal photographs of the wife taken by the husband, the kind of photographs that we might take of our wife in private. And he starts to kind of try and put it into some kind of timeline, into some reference to discover who the ancestors were. And because he's fascinated, that's how his mind works. So we needed footage. So, uh, you know, I went to the weekend, for the weekend I went to New York and I just took my little DV cam and I, I shot the Dennis footage for his documentary. We're already in position. And just get some pops. And that's really enough pieces. Wow. New York, New York, huh? Stay on the same lens size. And then we just go on a 50 finally. Then I think we've got good coverage. We also needed footage of the previous family in the swimming pool, i.e. Stephen Dorff's wife and his kids, who mysteriously have now vanished and nobody knows quite where they've gone. I cast the mother and the two kids for those characters. Uh, we filled up the pool, which we just constructed, and we created a little Christmas tree set for Christmas Day, and I shot all that footage. In that instance, I had to be an amateur filmmaker. In the instance of Dennis, I had to be a kind of professional, independent documentary filmmaker, but all on the same camera. Mr. Massey? Dale! Uh, no, sir. My name is... Fix that lower gate, or have heifers get out, or a truck will kill one, or hurt it bad enough, or I'll have to put them down. I'm not Dale. Chocolate cherries. Bottom drawer. Mike Figgis made this extraordinary thing where he took um, a video camera, a a regular video camera, and he put it inside this thing that looks like a steering wheel, and he'd move the controls of the video camera to the outside of the steering wheel. And so, by putting it in this steering wheel thing, his video things appear to be like floating because they're in this steering wheel contraption that, that Mike made, so that they're not just moving like this, the way that we make our videos at home, they're moving like this. We made an agreement. Just go back and let him do his line and then cut in. So you have the movie movie, and concentrically, inside of the movie, you have Dennis's documentaries. I hate everybody. Just stay together. Follow me. And Dennis made a lot of them, really himself, while we were in the movie, walking, looking at our new house, or going downstairs. 
so that the movie is happening and then you have the video movies that Dennis is making which become at some points intriguing and then at some points very very frightening because of the terrifying things that are happening to us night vision okay hold the light Let's say 30, 40 years ago, you were showing documentary footage. It would be a pretty sure bet that very few people in the audience would know the difference from one kind of footage or another because at that point, filmmaking as a hobby was very expensive and, you know, and, and tricky. The virtually is no one in the audience right now who hasn't handled a DV cam in some way, shape or form, shot their own stuff. You know, everyone's got one. So you have to get it right. You got a lot of great equipment. I had a strong conversation with the production department saying, you know, this has got to be correct. When Dennis sits at his workstation with his Mac and his Final Cut Pro, you can't just throw out a bit of old tat, you know, it's a few things with knobs on. People know what it looks like now, and particularly a younger audience, you know, there's a huge film literate audience now. Bang with Hammer, bang with Hammer, till they were all dead. Tabby, Green, Roman, always be there. So that stuff is now in the movie, you know. And I think it looks pretty good, you know. Down a devil's throat. 